My name is Dr. Patrick McGann, and today we'll be discussing subscapularis rotator cuff tendon tears and the arthroscopic treatment of these tears. I am a board-certified orthopedic surgeon in San Francisco, California, who specializes in arthroscopic surgery of the shoulder and knee. We'll start with a brief uh, introduction, uh, followed by a discussion of subscapularis tears as well as their arthroscopic treatment. The shoulder is a ball and socket joint. It's composed of three bones, the scapula, clavicle, and the humerus. It is surrounded by the rotator cuff muscles. There are four rotator cuff tendons. The tendon we will be discussing is the subscapularis tendon, which runs in the anterior aspect of the shoulder. The subscapularis muscle covers the front of the shoulder and provides strength and stability to the anterior aspect of the shoulder. Today we will be focusing on one of the hallmarks of a subscapularis tear, which is called the comma sign. Complete subscapularis tears will retract medially. The comma sign is formed by the superior glenohumeral ligament and the coracohumeral ligament complex, which is torn off the humerus. This piece of tissue is also known as the medial sling of the biceps, which secures both the biceps tendon in the groove as well as the subscapularis tendon. When the subscapularis tears and retracts, this complex of tissues forms a comma sign. This is a marker for the superior lateral border of the subscapularis tendon. It also is a firm piece of tissue which can be used and incorporated in the subscapularis repair. This is the normal anatomy of the shoulder, which includes the biceps tendon, the medial sling of the biceps, the subscapularis tendon, and the humeral head. The common tissue is the medial sling of the biceps tendon, which forms a comma sign when the subscapularis tears and retracts. Again, this is a nice demonstration of normal anatomy with a subscapularis tendon inserting on the humeral head. The M represents the comma tissue, which is the medial sling of the biceps tendon, which secures the biceps tendon in place and also secures the superior attachment of the subscapularis tendon. Rotator cuff injuries can occur from either an acute injury, such as a shoulder dislocation, or from chronic degeneration, such as chronic overhead activity or weightlifting. The presentation of a rotator cuff typically involves pain in front of the shoulder, this is also accompanied by weakness with internal rotation. This manifests as a positive bear hug test and a positive belly press test. Rotator cuff tears can be classified in several ways. However, it's typically most useful to classify these as either partial thickness rotator cuff tears or full thickness rotator cuff tears. Typically, conservative management is indicated for partial thickness rotator cuff tears. I typically start with rest, physical therapy, activity modification, and cortisone injections. However, when conservative management fails, arthroscopic subscapularis repair is indicated. Arthroscopic subscapularis repair is also indicated for acute, full thickness tear in young patients. As previously mentioned, it's also indicated for partial thickness tears which have failed conservative management. Surgery is typically done arthroscopically. As this animation shows, small incisions in the skin are used to pass arthroscopic instruments. These instruments then pass sutures through the torn subscapularis tendon. These sutures are then loaded through a suture anchor outside the skin. A hole is then made in the bone, and the suture anchor is then placed into the bone, therefore securing the subscapularis tear. This can be done on an outpatient and minimally invasive format in order to prevent the optimal recovery for the patient. As you can see, the tendon is then firmly adhered back to the bone. As with any surgery, there are potential risks to arthroscopic subscapularis repair. However, the overall risk is less than 5%. Arthroscopic subscapularis repair is a relatively straightforward recovery. This is an outpatient surgery in which the patient leaves the surgery center the same day. Dressings are kept in place for three days and then replaced with band-aids. Physical therapy typically starts one week after surgery in order to prevent stiffness and optimize recovery. This is a general physical therapy outline. 
A patient wears a sling for the first six weeks and we focus our attention on physical therapy, focusing on passive range of motion. At six weeks, a patient can discontinue the sling and can start active range of motion exercises. Once active range of motion has been achieved at approximately three months postoperatively, we then begin a strengthening program for three to six months postoperatively. Full recovery from a subscapularis repair typically occurs six months postoperatively. However, it should be noted that patients can engage in cardio activities much earlier. Patients can use a stationary bike at two weeks and can begin jogging at six weeks. This is arthroscopic footage of a subscapularis repair I performed. With my grasper, I am pulling the torn and retracted subscapularis back to the humeral head. You can see the piece of tissue to the left of the screen represents the comma tissue. I am showing that how with mobilization, I can now bring the torn and retracted subscapularis back to the humeral head. This is my completed repair. As you can see the sutures coming out of the anchor, which have secured the subscapularis back to the humerus and has secured the medial sling back to the superior lateral portion of the humerus. In summary, arthroscopic subscapularis repair is a safe and effective procedure. This is indicated for acute full thickness tears as well as partial thickness tears that have failed conservative management. At the time of arthroscopic surgery, all additional injuries are addressed. The rotator cuff tear is secured with bioabsorbable uh, suture anchors that do not need to be removed. The recovery process involves active patient engagement and it takes six months for full recovery. Further information can be found at the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgery website. Thank you.